Right, and just I'm going to talk about a potential method for assessing aspects of the six C's. Right, who are we? Right, um, I work for the emissions testing um, service, which is a unit um, part of Cambridge Assessment. Uh, Cambridge Assessment, we're an assessment agency, so we're an, we're an exam awarding body, and we do lots of other things. I mean, the admissions testing service is focused on selection to higher education, or selection into education. Um, we're actually, we're Department of Cambridge University, we're, we're a non-teaching department, we're, we're actually a charity, um, so anything, any money we, we make goes straight back into educational assessment, just to let you know. Um, right, where do I come in when I was asked to do this? Because I'm not really about training, I'm, I'm about selection. And talking, uh, say, a little a method that we've come up with to us I, I think could assess aspects of the six C's it wasn't developed with the six C's in mind at all um, but of words we're trying to say is there a way we can assess an individual's likelihood to engage to live the six C's um, what um, what can we do with, with that kind of information? Is it all just about selection, or can we use that information for, for training as well? Our story starts about four or five years ago. We run the biomedical admissions test, which is a selection test um, to undergraduate medicine. And our admissions tutors were telling us, well, the, the BMAT test, it, it's good. It, it looks at things like problem solving, critical thinking, application of um, scientific knowledge, chemistry, biology. But there's more to being a doctor. We do interviews. We don't feel the rigorous and objective enough, what else can you do? Is there another form of assessment that you could provide? Um, so we started feasibility research and part of that research involved talking to admissions tutors and academics in other fields, not just medicine, but nursing, midwifery, dentistry, across the field, and actually general academic subjects as well, um, to look at what were the kind of characteristics that people felt were important for success on their course. And then we were like, well, how do we create an assessment to reflect this? We've got to pin it down to some quite quickly on someone. We don't have time to do two, three hour interviews and um, very involved assessment centres, although multiple mini interviews are, are coming in. Um, and it goes back to what our emissions tutors were, were asking for, their remit. We want a proper framework. We want a more rigorous approach than the kind of more sort of guttonomics or we end up using the interview to test critical thinking you know so we not really come out really understanding a lot about the person so here we are now cutting a long very long four-year trialing story very short here's one aspect uh, one little bit it's online as you can see and those of you who've taken this form of uh, assessment know that what you're usually asked to do well we call it the cambridge personal styles questionnaire or cpsq for short um what you do is um you're usually just asked to rate from strongly agree strongly agree how how close those statements match how you think feel, behave, your, your attitudes, and you usually ask a lot of questions. We ask 164 
questions in these quads. But we know from our, our last live trial use, it takes about, a fluent English speaker would take about 20 minutes. We know from some work we just did in Oman, um, where English is a second language, so it's about 45 minutes to do. Um, so it's quicker than you think. So there's the typical, you rate it, but that wasn't good enough for us because as you know someone could just go through that strongly agreeing with all the very nice stuff about themselves we call it social desirability responding you might call it faking good um, but I mean you, you, you know if you, you you you're looking for um, you, to get selected for something you don't actually naturally expect people to put their best foot forward and there'd be something wrong if you didn't try and manage your impression at interview um, but we know you're going to try and do this with this form of questionnaire so we ask you where you tie to then start ranking your choices and that leads to a much more sophisticated um, scoring system it means you you actually really also have to think about what is most like you rather than just agreeing with everything or choosing the, the middle option with everything so here we go um then what we do is that's very hard for you for you to see i know we we collate we score and we report back within a framework um this is something we've been wor working on it's a, a report for an in, on an individual so down the left hand side do you have behavioral descriptions which are based on the person's responses to the CPSQ. So depending on how you respond, your, the bullet points that come up on that left-hand side will be different for each person. And then you've got a little metric, little scale down the other side, um, which is color zone. So right now, while we're doing validation research, probably people within the green zone, based on their responses, um, are saying reassuring things. It's like a structured personal statement, but we ask the question, we didn't just give you a blank sheet of paper we asked you what we wanted to know um, and you know so this sort of person is saying well I you know so what does it say I'll have to go <laughs> so I have to get close to myself um, tends to respond quickly and willingly to request for, for help so is attentive to the needs of others this sort of thing someone might might write in a personal statement um, but we can get a little bit deeper than an interviewer or a personal statement statement so coping with demands may find it challenging to remain positive in the face of problems and setbacks so with this sort of thing we can start to get underneath a little bit which you can't really do in you know short interview times um, so that's an individual report and then this is the sort of thing we've been doing and we did this for city this isn't actually city this is a mixed group from trial four um, of nursing midwifery students across a few universities and this is a group profile so this is not an individual and the colored dots here are the the group's average scores on so, some of our dimensions underneath which i'll go into so if you think about the black line as being the average person in the street or the average student nursing and midwifery students are coming up immediately higher on helping cooperative social responsibility, resilience, and emotional control than the average person. There's a little bit of a range. That black bar is, is, is a range, so some people are even higher. Um, but compared to the average person, they've got these traits are coming out quite strongly. Why? Maybe because these universities are incumbent, these are students already, maybe because these universities chose students in that way or maybe people with those kind of traits were attracted to nursing and midwifery um, in a way we, do, we don't mind what's go going on here but I, I would say that's kind of quite interesting the only slightly that was is that on the act of inquiry and open thinking and we'll have a little look at that what does all that mean um, so after four years four thousand people took part in our various trials um, to try and get the smallest amount of items which would really reflect the most about the person we've sort of coalesced on these 13 scales I hope no one's oh right superstitious I'm gonna have to speed up here um, I've highlighted some of the areas that well 
that you might be interested in, active inquiries, intellectual curiosity. This, this type of person um, doesn't take things at face value, wants to know more. Helping, we found from these 4,000 people, people really vary on their willingness to help other people. We don't naturally, not everyone comes willing to help others. Um, social responsibility sounds a bit boring following social rules, but think it's about if you see a sign that says don't leave your bag in the aisle, you and I probably wouldn't because we think someone might trip over that, but other people don't think in that way, they'll leave their bag in the aisle. So thinking about the consequences for others. Now this is my attempt to relate them to the six C's. So coming back to the six C's, your six competency areas. Now this is my interpretation from the literature that I've read about the six C's. So I wouldn't like to say my definition is completely right. You might disagree with me on some of these points. But this is how we work with, with groups as we look at the um, CPSQ dimensions and we look at people's behavioral competencies, things that they would like to assess and we make a logical match and then we do validation trying to make an empirical match as well. So I don't know if you would agree with that. I've got one, I put self-control and that's really our emotional um, control dimension but it means the same thing patients less likely to lose it with others uh, keeping your calm rather than becoming irritated or, or frustrated so we're saying with within that one where is it there about patient-centered communication you'd be looking for qualities that someone wants to help others generally cooperative to others willing to listen to others opinions um, Probably socially confident maybe to make the first move to others to ask them if they're all right. And that kind of emotional self-control to be patient. So it's no good just being nice to the nice people. You've got to be nice to or look after even people that are frustrating as well. So you have to have that, that self-control. Um, so I was asked by Nick to say, well, that, select or train for the six C's. It's complex. In a way, we don't fully know. It's an interaction. Trait activation theory from psychology um, says that basically if you get someone with the right sort of traits, preferences, tendencies, and you make a good fit to the job, um, then it, the person is going to work better. They're going to feel uh, they're reaching their own personal goals. Um, it, things are going to things are going to work better, and their traits are actually going to deepen. So the traits you want, such as say helping and caring, if you make that good match to the job with the person, that trait is actually going to deepen over time. The person becomes adapts and becomes even more the job. However, could we take someone who's, no one's going to be perfect on the six C's, no one's going to be 100% on the six C's, and we're all different. So in some areas, could you train someone, or could you take someone who's a bit middling and um, train them to reflect, engage with the six C's? And I'd like to think yes. I've got two minutes. I'd like to think yes. Um, because if we give people the right sort of training and work environment, that's very important. If those environments highlight and reinforce desired behaviours, if we show people what we want and we reinforce them, we praise that, um, then the person, trait theory is saying, is probably going to change over time. Um, and the traits you're looking for are going to become more ingrained in that person. The person literally changes at at a core level. That's the idea at the moment, that people can change at a core level, but you'll have to support them to do it. Um, if you've been interested in what I've said, we're looking for more groups for, for live trialling, not just in education, but we feel there could be uses within employment, either entry level, or maybe within development, maybe as personal ways of actually benchmarking and tracking people and tracking if there is personal change. Um, get, do get in, please do get in touch. Um, thanks for listening to me and happy Christmas. Okay. <laughs>